And in this particular video, we're trying to determine whether this is correct. So what do we have here? Well, we have a function and we're seeing that this is the inverse function of this function. At least that is the question, just in case uh, you were confused. So given this function here, is this the correct inverse function? Okay, so there's a couple different ways to approach this problem. If you think you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm gonna show you the correct answer in a second, and then I'm gonna uh, really have a good little overview for uh, this topic. Now, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, you absolutely need to know a ton of things about functions and inverse functions, domain range. It's a huge topic in algebra. So anyways, I'm gonna get into all of this. Also, if you need math help uh, with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to it in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go and see the answer here. So here's the function and we're asking, uh, is this the inverse function of this function? Well, the answer is yes. And there's a couple of different approaches here that you can take to validate um, this function and inverse function. But I'm gonna talk about a bigger, uh, the bigger picture here in just one second. But if you got this right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you know a little bit about functions and their inverses. I'm pretty sure they'll be very impressed with that information. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So one way, one way we could do this is we'll take this function, right? This function that we had in the problem, and well, let's just go ahead and find the inverse, right? This is one approach. We're like, yeah, let's just find the inverse and uh, let's go back to our actual problem. In other words, here is the pro uh, here's the function. Let's find the inverse. And if we get this as our final answer, well, then that's you know a pretty good indication that in fact uh, that function is the inverse of our original function. So how do you find the inverse of a function? Now, this is basic algebra 101. For those of you that are in any kind of Algebra 1, Algebra 2 course, you should know how to do this. But let's go ahead and just walk through the steps right now. So in a function, we use this uh, function notation. We call this f of x. f is just the name of the function. Don't get too stuck on f. You can have a function g of x. Again, this is just the name of the function. You can have uh, a function like this, YouTube of videos, okay? Uh, it doesn't make a difference. Remember, this outside uh, letter or uh, word is just the name of the function. This is the input variable, okay? So I don't want to turn this in. I'm very tempted to turn this into a, you know, a full lesson on functions because I just love teaching about functions. Remember, the root word in functions is fun. The bottom line is you're going to need to know a ton about functions. Anyways, let's go back to f of x. What you need to know is that f of x is equal to y. Okay, that's what you need to know, okay? So here we have f of x is equal to 1 half x plus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace that f of x, that function, with the variable y. So that's the first thing you want to do. All right, so here, instead of f of x is equal to 1 half x plus 1, we're going to write y is equal to 1 half x plus 1. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, the second step here, okay, what we're trying to do is find the inverse function of this function is we're going to replace, we're going to switch, not replace, we're going to switch the uh, y and the x, okay? We're, uh, we're going to put x where y is, and we're going to put y is where x is, and this is the result of doing this, okay? So the first step was to uh, replace your f of x with y. Now we switch the x and y right here, okay? All right, now the third step is to solve for y, okay? That's the third step. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So x is equal to 1 half y plus 1. So remember, in an equation, the left is equal to the right, the right is equal to the left. So I'm just going to bring this 1 half y plus 1 on this side of the equation. That's equal to x. This is There's no problem doing that. Remember, I'm solving for y. That's what I want to do. So I want to keep my y on the left-hand side of the equation. So how do we do this? Well, first thing we need to do is subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. Now, hopefully you understand this algebra. If you do not, then, you know, these are all indications that you need to brush up on algebra. 
if you're um, looking at this problem, you're like, yeah, this is what I'm studying right now, you need to check out like my Algebra 1 course in my Math Help program. Okay, if you happen to be in Algebra 2, I teach it in that, that, that course as well. All right, so we have 1 half y is equal to x minus 1. So to solve for y, you simply need to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Remember, we have a difference here, so you want to put this in parentheses, so y is equal to 2 times x minus 1. All right, now if you're having trouble with this, a lot of students, you know, when they're struggling with functions and inverses, it's because they're struggling with basic algebra. All right, so again, you know, your skills are not going to improve magically on their own. You're going to have to do something about it. So you're like, oh yeah, I'm confused here. Well, then just work on what you need to work on and you will improve. All right, so when we solve for y, y is equal to 2 times x minus 1. But let's go ahead and distribute that 2 in. So that would be 2x minus 2. Okay, so that's what y is equal to. And so when we're done, this y, we can use this notation here, this f of negative 1. That is the inverse function, 2x minus 2. Now, with that knowledge, okay, uh, what we want to do is like, oh, yeah, that's that's what this uh, problem was asking, the original problem. Uh, I got 2x minus 2, yeah, so this is correct. That is true. But that is kind of a, uh, that's one thing, one way you could solve this problem. That's what I'm trying to say. But here is the bigger picture. Okay, let's kind of get into this right now. And this is the definition of a function and an inverse. So what is an inverse function? Well, basically, uh, in your algebra books, you should see something like this. Now, this looks kind of crazy, right? Like, what is all of this? A lot of you would just be like, I'm not learning this. That's just too complex. Well, what we're saying here is we're dealing with a function and a composite function, okay? So we're going to be taking the composite function of an inverse. Let's just go ahead and explain it. So if you have a, a function f of x like we just, you know, uh, or like the functions we're looking at, and you have an inverse, okay, a function is um, and an inverse function, they're in fact, or let's just say this way, a function is an inverse of another function. That's the way I want to say this. I'm kind of just writing this out. There is a more, more formal way to define this, but let me just start again. A function is an inverse of another function if this holds true. So what does this mean? Well, if we plug in the inverse function into our original function, and if we plug in the original function into the inverse function, like so, that we're talking about composite functions here, you'll end up with x, okay? So you need to understand this definition. This is how you verify whether a function and an inverse are, in fact, you know, uh, each other's inverses, okay? So the inverse of this function is this function, and the inverse of this function is this function. So what does this really mean? Well, you need to understand basic composite functions so a composite function, for those of you out there, you're probably more familiar with this notation, f of g of x. So again, you know, if you're like, oh boy, I'm totally confused on composite functions, function operations, go ahead and, you know, make a little list. Okay, I don't get this, I don't get that, I don't get this. And this is your to-do list and start working on these skills, okay? As you fix these skills or you're improving these skills, everything is going to get better for you. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, check to see, okay, whether the uh, inverse or the composite functions of each of these functions is in fact x. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. This is not that difficult. Don't let the notation, you know, intimidate you. All right, so here is f of x and here is uh, f of negative uh, 1 of x or the inverse function. So let's go ahead and plug the uh, right here. Let's plug in the inverse function into the f function. All right, so what does that mean? Well, if I wanted to find f of, let's say, 3, what is my input? Well, 3 is my input, meaning wherever I see x, I'm going to put in a 3, right? 1 half parentheses 3 plus 1, right? So here I'm evaluating the, uh, this function for 3, but just replacing this x with 3. Well, the same idea holds true with the composite function. Right here, we're going to be plugging in to this function this uh, inverse function, but we're not plugging in this notation. We're plugging in this stuff right here, 2x minus 2. So we're going to replace that x with 2x minus 2. And now let's go ahead and do the algebra here, okay? Again, we're talking about, um, you know, basic composite functions. So 1 half times 2x is what? That's 1x. 1 half 
times this negative 2 is negative 1. And then remember, we have this plus 1 here, right? So here, we just plugged in 2x minus 2. And then we have this plus 1. And look right here. This works out so lovely. We have 1x minus 1 plus 1. These right here go away. That's become 0. And we're left with x. Okay, so that is what the definition of a function and its inverse is. We're left with x. But now let's go ahead and test it the other way. Okay, so let me go ahead and bring that down here. All right, so this time we're going to go ahead and plug in to the inverse function the regular, the original function. Okay, so in other words, we're going to find f of negative 1 of f of x. So we're going to plug in this stuff into here. Okay, so this is going to be 2 times 1 half x plus 1. You can see I already did this right here, minus 2. So you can't forget that. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do this math. So 2 times 1 half x is x. 2 times 1 is 2 minus 2. This is 0, and we get x. So there you go. So really a math teacher, okay, if you really want to impress your, your math teacher in school and like a problem like this, if you showed them that you understood the definition, a formal definition, maybe a function and an inverse, okay, they would just be like, wow, that is impressive. You must be watching that guy on YouTube. I don't know. You're just going to get like an A++. Matter of fact, they might just sit and tell you just to go home and, you know, they'll send you your A+, and, and you know, be like, hey, take, a, take the rest of the year off. You know, uh, I can tell you right now, um, there are uh, a lot of students out there, uh, and you could be one of them as well, that just take the initiative and learn st stuff on their own. And that's what you have to be to be excellent in math. In other words, if the teacher isn't teaching you everything, you know, if you're like, ah, oh, I'm waiting for, you know, the teacher to teach me, sometimes you just have to, like, write some questions down and go figure out your um, answers. Go get your answers. And that's what I try to do in my videos is have a ton of videos and in my math help program so you can research and figure out what you need to know. All right, so if this video helps you out in some small way, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.